All righty. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, to the saints that are scattered around the world that we don't even know about, the saints in the chat, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right. So what did we talk about last week? Last week, we were talking about the parables, right? We were talking about how Yahushua, Yahushua spoke to the people, to the multitudes, the great multitudes, the ones that followed them, the followers of, of Christ, as you might put it, the Christians, right? He spoke to them only in parables. But when he spoke to his disciples, he thoroughly explained the books that he expounded all things. So he thoroughly explained everything to the disciples. And we talked about the difference of that. We talked about the different types of parables. You had the parable of the, um, the parable of the sower, where we talked about how you might plant something. And when you plant something, you expect something to grow. But he is talking about, well, we were like the soil. We were like the ground. So if something gets planted, yeah, we something get planted along the, the walkway, right? It just gets snatched up by the raven, gets snatched up by Satan, right? Some get planted by the by the rocky places. It just get uh, it gets it don't take root, right? It just get washed away real quick, right? If some get planted by the thorns and by the roses and by all these different things, it get choked out. And we said we talked about how that 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 represents the the cares of the world, the worries of the world. And then lastly, if something goes to the um to the good soil, it reproduces seed. You know, maybe uh, I think it was 30, 60 and 100 fold. Right. And there's many others, the parable of the wheat and the tares, a few other parables that we talked about. So he spoke to the people all in parables and in speaking in those parables, he was teaching us lessons. But he spoke to them in parables purposely for the for the reason that they wouldn't understand things. Right. So that they wouldn't get it. So that the things would be difficult for them to understand. And then when he got to his disciples, he thoroughly explained it. Right. He went down, he broke it down, he explained what the parables mean, which which sower, what it represented, and all that. So now we are going to continue on. Um, we're going to continue on. Let's pick up, let's see, first, where did we leave off? Where did we leave off last week? You on mute? We on uh, Matthew, we left off on Matthew 13, so we probably on 14. Give me Matthew 5. I mean, not Matthew 5. Give me uh, Mark 5. Mark 5, give me verse 1. Mark 5, verse 1. My bad, I was on mute. Came by. They came over unto the side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. 
But when he saw Yahushua far off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Yahushua, thy son of the most high God? I right. So him. now this is a man that got an evil spirit in him, right? We would all look at this man and just be like, man, that dude, that guy is crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's a crazy man, right? He cutting himself. He out here cutting himself. We got people today that cut themselves, right? They go through stuff. They dealing with something. What they do? They start cutting themselves, right? And so he's displaying the same types of behavior that we see today. We see people walking around, talking to themselves, you know, walking down the street. We see people cutting themselves. The only thing we say is, oh, that person must be, you know, uh, what's that? What they call it? What what's the uh when they when they want you to take the depression real serious, what they call it? You know what I'm saying? They put something on the front of the depression. It ain't just like they ain't depressed, they something depressed. No, not chronic, but that's another one. Oh, it's another one. What is it? When they uh like is it manic? Depressed? I think it's manic depressed or something like that. Manic depressed. <laughs> manic depression. Something like that. They put something on the front of that thing. And that's when you're supposed to like, oh, no, that's that's not just regular depression. That's super depression. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we would call him. We would just call Yeah, he got it. Let me see. Oh, yeah, manic depression. Appreciate you, sister. Yeah, so the sister, you know what I'm saying? The sister told me it's manic depression. You put that manic on the front of that depression, that's when you, like, you treat him with kid gloves after that. Be like, oh, no, it's, can I help you with anything? Are you, okay, but are you sure? Right? Because it's manic, whatever that means. Right? And so... You either look, when you're dealing with those type of people, that's what you look. They either manic, depressed, or if they walk around on the street talking to themselves, what we say? That's a crackhead. You know what I'm saying? That boy crack. You know what I'm saying? That's a crackhead. So you only got two options. You manic, depressed, or a crackhead. Back then, that's not how we looked at it, though. Right? We didn't look at it back then. Back then, we looked at it like, oh, no, that man got an evil spirit. Right? The stuff that, the stuff that they've taught us to diagnose and this, that, another, back in the day, we just would have called it. We, I mean, we were just simple people back then. That's why people look at us now. They be looking like, they be looking like, oh, you're just silly for being religious because it's simple. He's like, oh, now he acting crazy. Now that boy just got an evil spirit. Right? Right now, you look, they book of mental health diagnoses, right? Though they got a book, probably thousands of pages of how you can be diagnosed. I mean, they can diagnose, they get to the point that they tell you, Everything is a darn spectrum. That's what they say. I think that kid's on the spectrum. You know what I'm saying? Because no matter what, somebody got something. Right? If you put your kid in front of these people, they going to give you something. It might be minor, and they may say, oh, well, you know, he's, you know what I'm saying? It's that and other, da, da, da. You ain't got to do nothing with him. You know what I'm saying? They be like, oh, well, he's, uh, they probably got one for artistic. So when you artistic, but you like, super artistic they probably got like a super artistic like a manic artistic then they probably got like a like mm, you know what i'm saying he just he just cracking the surface of artistic he pretty much a normal kid right and they diagnose but they diagnose every single thing back in the day it would only be if it's severe and if it's severe guess what we gonna call it oh that man got an evil spirit you know what i'm saying ain't nothing but an evil spirit so this is what this guy's dealing with he got rocks cutting his darn self he doing all types of the, ah, 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 and then Yahushua walk up and guess what he say? Yahushua, what have you to do with me? Who you think talking at that point? That's the, that's the, that's the evil spirit talking. <laughs> How you know my name? Right? He say, Yahushua, what have you to do with me? Right? Watch this. Keep going. And uh, let's see. Now you can't say you autistic to you. Yeah, that's rude. You gotta say artistic. <laughs> we got a got a, got an accent. He don't even know nothing about. No, nah, you know what I'm saying. You just they artists. You know what I'm saying. You ever seen them, like the sometimes the autistic kids be like super great at stuff. So it's like they're artistic. You know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? Not autistic. You know what I'm saying? Autistic is just like in 20 years. You know how we used to say retarded. They're not going to let you say that no more. They're they not going to let you say autistic no more. They, so now you got I'm just ahead of the game. I'm ahead of the game. Y'all going to see. That's funny. All right. So. And cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Yahushua, thou son of the most high God? I mm -hmm. adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. 
For he said unto him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send him away out of the country. Now there was now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Yahushua gave them leave, and the unclean spirit with that spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand and were choked in the sea. Right. So then he he took the spirits, he sent them into the pigs, and the pigs ran into the sea, and then they died. They choked, they drowned in the in the water. Right. So that's an example of a, of a of of an evil spirit on people. Right. We we tend to look at these things and we're pacified by science. And you have to understand that science, like, OK, let me give you an example. Right. We talk about depression. Right. What science would tell you is that a person's chemical balances are off generally when you're dealing with depression. Right. Which is probably absolutely right. Right. That's probably right. Like your chemical balances are off. But the question is, why? Like, what influences your chemical balances? So at some point, science becomes ineffective. Because what they'll do is they'll give you medication that maybe corrects your chemical balances. Temporarily, though, as long as the pill has effect. Right? So you take the pill, your chemical balance, it, it forces your chemical, it, it adds chemicals, causes your body to react to those chemicals, and they're so smart... They're manipulating your body. Like when you manipulate people, usually you manipulate their expectations, right? So, so a guy will come in knowing that he's a very smart guy. He could be ambitious, but he's lazy and he don't want to work for a living. But he found this girl that he think he can manipulate. So he might go to that girl and then he'll say, man, I really, I really, I really want to be this when I grow up and I really want to do this. And I really, man, but I just got a hard life and people do this stuff. And that. So then her expectations of him are very low because he presents these things, but he makes them low because of something that seems out of his control. Man, the man keeping me down, this, that, and other. So she ends up believing in what could be with him. And she spends her whole day trying to fix him and trying to make him great and all that. And the whole time he's just manipulating her based off of her expectation. He makes sure that she knows have low expectations of me, but have very high hopes of me. Right? Because that'll make her work. And sometimes you manage expectations by, by, by saying, oh, let me make all these high expectations. Oh, baby, I'll do this for you. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do this. I'll do this. Right? Then they get high expectations and you ride that as long as you can ride it. And then, wow, one day they're going to be looking like, oh, he lied to me. Then they hate you. Them is the ones that cut up all your clothes. You know what I'm saying? Get to cutting your clothes, set your house on fire. What left I do? She set the whole house on fire. That's the type of stuff they do because you had these very, very high expectations. And then one day it just come crashing down. Right? That's how you manipulate people mentally. Well, there's a physiological way to do that too. Right? Everything with manipulation is like you insert something and then cause people to react to it, right? So the same thing happens chemically with our body. We take these pills, right? And they insert some chemical into our body through the pill. And then our body reacts to it and they predict that reaction. They say, okay, if I if I insert, you know, microclosoglom into, you know, the bloodstream, then the, the blood will begin, the white blood cells will start to fight that, and then that'll cause this to happen, and that'll cause, but their end state is, what I hope to happen is, I want to insert this, and I want the end state to increase this chemical. So they increase the chemical that's out of balance, and they decrease the chemical that's out of balance, so then it brings your chemicals back in balance temporarily. But then the, the pills have side effects, and they have all these other things that's going on. So then... We're manipulating something that's in the body, but guess what? We're never really addressing the root cause of what caused those chemicals to be in out of balance in the first place. Mesothelioma. Huh? Mesothelioma. <laughs> Some people would say it's the food you eat. Maybe it's other medication that you take. Maybe it's drugs that you take. Maybe it's things that you've been through in your life. It could be a whole lot of things. 
I think the book would explain a lot of this stuff as spiritual. Right? And sometimes it's not your fault that you got a spirit on you. Right? Sometimes it's not like sometimes you didn't you didn't say, hey, spirit, come come jump on me. Sometimes you didn't do no great bit of evil, any more evil than the person that's right next to you. But guess what? You got a spirit sitting on you. Sometimes it's not even about you. Right? Sometimes there's a spirit on you to see how your brother going to react. To see how your sister going to react, your dad, your mom, your friend, your job, right? Sometimes it has nothing to do with you and it has something to do with the people around you. All we have to do is we have to make sure that everything that we look at, we look at it through the guise and through the scope of the book. And we make no excuses for nobody, no matter what is going on, we make no excuses. However, we support each other. And we build each other up according to the infirmities that we have, to the challenges that we have, right? So if I know that I, I'm dealing with somebody that frequently has to deal with spirits, and that might be diagnosed as depression or manic depression, or it might be diagnosed as schizophrenia or whatever it is, if we know that that's what we're dealing with, we have to find a way to support our brother and sister in a way that builds them up. To, but we never make excuses. We still got to tell them, bro, you crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yesterday you were telling me this. Today you being a whole other person. You're crazy. However, let me be here for you the way I can. Right? A lot of people are dealing with stuff, but you got to look at it in two ways. One, don't make excuses. Right? But two, understand that they're dealing with it and figure out how to support them. Make yourself second. So y'all sure will walk up to this man, and that's what he did. He said, okay, I know how to support you. All these demons, go ahead, jump into that pig. The pigs ran out. And they drowned themselves, and now the man is without demons. It'd be real easy if, if y'all gave us that power, right? He gave it to some of the disciples, right? It'd be real easy if y'all gave us that power, right? And one day he, he will. One day he will give, you know what I'm saying, the men of God and the women of God that power so that we can cast out these demons. Right now, we got to sort through just by the book. Remember, everything that comes to us in our life is just a challenge, Right? It is the most high God trying to say, OK, are you going to buckle bust based off of this challenge? If I put this in front of you, are you going to say, uh, you know what, make an excuse and go do something that you ain't supposed to be doing? Are you going to give up? Are you going to lose faith? Or are you going to push through? And that's all we got to do is push through no matter what it is. Right. Keep going. Okay. So hold on. So yeah, you know, yeah, you know, you can't talk. So, so, uh, so Sister Tia said, "Is that only for naturally occurring uh, occurring imbalances? What about when it's induced by drugs or alcohol? Same outlook response? Well, no, not the same, right? It's the it, the 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 way you deal with it is the same, right? But it's not the same because." If you take drugs and that invites spirits, that invites different spirits into you, which is the mass majority of the time, that's what's happening. And not just drugs, right? When I say drugs, I mean medication as well, right? Sometimes we are given medication and it invites spirits to us, right? Because it, it, it just, it changes the chemicals in our brain, but we don't know if that change of chemicals in our brain is the effect of a spirit. The scientists can't tell us that. Right. They can't study that. They can't say like like if I if I have if I have a fan. Right. And if I have a fan and I see this piece of paper and I blow the fan on the piece of paper. Right. The piece of paper going to start wagging. So a person can look at it and I can say, hey, why don't my paper ever stay straight? And they can tell you, oh, that's because your paper is just wagging. But they may not see. Oh, the reason is because there's a fan blowing on it. They don't know the reason that it's wagging. They can just tell us that's what's happening. I can see that it's out of balance, but they don't know why it's out of balance. So we don't really know if you drinking alcohol causes an out of balance because a spirit has come to you once the defenses of the alcohol lowered your, 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 your spiritual defenses. That's the part we don't really know. Yeah, like when We know from what the books say. Huh? People, yeah, like when people get high or whatever like that, it's like you, you kind of like crossing that. Plane almost or you're like you're, you're 
when people get high, they're like, yo, I got high and I saw this, or I got high and I saw that, or you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I had this crazy experience when I took mushrooms or whatever like that. Yeah, that stuff. Um, definitely exactly uh, right. Yeah, it kind of open you up to the spiritual spiritual world almost. That's exactly what it do, mm-hmm. right? That's exactly what these the, these drugs do. And if you even look at some of these words from from old time, right? The uh, uh, the sister said that alcohol sometimes calls spirits. That's absolutely right. That comes from something, right? You should look up where the word pharmaceuticals came from, right? All that stuff come from witchcraft. Yeah, right. And so it's 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 a spiritual thing, right? The medications that we take, all these different things, these are spiritual things. I'm not saying that taking medication is absolutely a sin, right? What I'm saying is the effects of these medications, we don't really know, right? It's a reason why when they put all these medications on, on, on the, uh, on the uh, commercials, it's a reason why they list off a whole bunch of stuff at the end. And they get to telling you, might make you poop out of the front and the back. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Could, could cause one eye to close. You know what I'm saying? Could... And then they hit you off at the very end and suicidal thoughts. And then, then from there, it's always the, the white happy lady skipping through the plane. But why Kovia always help me go? You know what I'm saying? And you be looking like, like, did you just tell me I'm going to commit suicide if y'all take this? But then you give me the white happy lady? I have yeah, to take playing, that message. Playing tennis. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, somebody, somebody, get me, somebody get my hands on that pill. You play tennis. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why Kovia? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm supposed to take this for a stomach ache, but the side effect is I might have suicidal thoughts. But that's what runs that's what runs a lot of business around here. Right? If you look at it, I just want y'all, if y'all watch TV with commercials on it still, I just want y'all to pay attention to how many commercials there are. Right? Just count them. Right? Let's say you watch like three 30-minute shows. Count how many commercials there are that are talking about medication. And then I want you to think about how much it costs to have a commercial. And that will tell you who's paying for everything that we see. Right? And that's the way of the world, right? That's just how things work. It's not, it's not, it's not even a complicated concept. That's just how things work. If I want a TV show, let's say me, right? Brother Phil, I want a TV show. And you know what my TV show going to be about. You know what I'm saying? We probably going to do like, you know what I'm saying? Joab's Revenge. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like we're going to do like something crazy, right? But in my TV show, I say I'm promoting not ever taking medication. Like Joab, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I want I want every every episode of the TV show, Joab is telling telling people no to medication. And Joab is strong and he's resilient and all that, right? And people look at him and be like, dang, I don't want to take medication. If the whole television station is being paid for by pharmaceutical companies and they keeping the lights on, do you think for one, my one measly show that they going to risk they stuff? Absolutely not. If I want to do an interview on CNN, but every commercial on CNN is talking about pharmaceuticals, right? And I jump on CD, CNN and I want to talk about how, you know what? Hey, there's a way to deal with depression. That has nothing to do with medication. Stop taking your medication. Challenge yourself. Think this way. Think about things this way. And I start telling people how I manage my thoughts or how I manage my 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 uh my expectations and how I look at the world and how I deal with myself and all these different things. Do you think they want to hear that? (laughs) Because that threatens a lot. Okay, let me give you a more real life example. When these white kids go up and shoot up the schools. Or shoot up the, the 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 town squares where all these people are, or they shoot up a church, or they do all these different things that's crazy, or they take a shot at President Trump, former President Trump, right? When these white folks that do all this stuff, when was the last time y'all turned on TV at a news station and they told y'all what drugs they were taking, what medication they were taking? Do you know almost all these kids, including the one that took a shot at Trump, are all on antidepressants? If it tells you, you might have suicidal thoughts. Have everybody heard of death by suicide? Yeah. 
What does that mean? What does death by suicide mean? If a man run up on a cop with a knife and says, shoot me, shoot me, what do you think he's doing? He's trying to get the cop to kill him. He wants to die. He wants to shot the cop to kill him. That's a, t that's a type of suicide. Then white folk do it all the time. But you're never going to hear about this stuff on TV because it's counterproductive to who's paying the bills. Right. So I make all these points just to say, right, the whole point of it is, is we can't limit ourselves into what we're being told by scientists and by the news and all this. We have to put God first. We have to look at it. We have to look at these examples that we see in the book and we say, OK, I know how I would describe this person. I would describe this man as walking around, cutting himself with rocks as probably manic schizophrenia. I don't even know if that's a thing, but I'm going to put manic in front of everything to make it more cracking. You know what I'm saying? So it's like manic schizophrenia. Chronic manic schizophrenia. Schiz schizophrenia. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you if you got that's how I'm going to describe it. when you, I read the Bible, I look at this man. They got an evil spirit. I would describe it as that. Now we have to ask ourselves. What would the father describe these people as? Advanced delusional schizophrenia with involuntary narcissistic rage. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? That's how that that's that's how that's how the average of these young women now, that's what they call men. You know what I'm saying? Just, oh, you mean a man. <laughs> you must be just talking about a man. <laughs> so uh the the point of it all is we have to be able to look at this stuff and know that. Everything around us is spiritual, right? Don't make it a bad thing. and Don't make it a good thing. All it makes it is reality. If you look at it that way, you have a different way of addressing our problems, right? It's not just addressing problems through medicine. It's not just addressing problems. Now we have options. Medication should just buy us time. That's all. That's it. That's all medication is there for. It ain't a bad thing. It's just even drugs. When people take drugs, the purpose of smoking some weed or the appropriate purpose of 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 uh shooting up some heroin, smoking some crack, whatever you're gonna do, that whole purpose is, man, I'm going through a lot. I just need a break from life. And what happens? It turns into an addiction, and now you can't escape it. But the initial purpose, generally, when people start taking drugs and start doing stuff, is to is to temporarily bring themselves over something that's overwhelming. Right. And that's all drugs are supposed to be. That's all. That's all medication is supposed to be. It's just supposed to buy you time. I'm going to go crazy. I might just kill myself. Let me take this pill that my doctor prescribed me so that that doesn't happen. And while I have this time of not killing myself, because I know if I stop taking this, I'm going to kill myself. What we have to learn how to start doing is how do we work through this problem without the medication? All right. I bought myself time. I took the pill. Now, what can I do? To make sure I don't need to take that pill the next time. Right? How do I mentally learn to work through these things? That's how you get rid of spirits. That's how you stop getting these things from influencing you. By obeying the book. So going back to what Sister Tia said. If you got the alcohol and you're getting drunk. Or you got the weed and you smoking and getting high. Or you got the crack. Or you got the cocaine and you sniffing it. All these different things. A whole lot of drugs out there. Right now the kids are doing the... Uh, what the uh what you know about the darn vape boy? They got uh the kids got the uh what they got? They got the pills, but what they call the good ones. Yeah, they got the you know what I'm saying? What they call them? Zanny bar. Did they start calling them that? They still call them Zanny bar? That's right, that's good. Y'all bet not know that was a test and y'all passed it. I wish one of y'all would say, yep, that's what they call them. Everybody would have to line up and get a darn whooping. Now, the Molly, oh, they don't do that. I don't, they ain't mess with no Molly no more. They might. I don't know. But I feel like it's the perk and the Xanax. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the effects of them are. And then the Fenty. You know what I'm saying? The fentanyl. You know what I'm saying? Them is the ones right now. Like, sometimes the perk got fentanyl in it from what they say. Right? And so you take all these pills. And these are, these are pharmaceutical pills. Right? You take these pills, they're not supposed to be prescribed to you, and then you start getting addicted to it and start getting all this stuff. And this stuff messes up your brain. This stuff messes up, you know what I'm saying? So what you need to do, going back to what Sister Tia said, is the first thing is you stop, you obey, right? 
you don't intoxicate yourself due to addiction, right? You don't, you know, if you're going, if you're going to take medication that's prescribed to you because you believe, or somebody's led you believe that this will help you in a medical sense from a professional, that's a different thing. That's a treatment from a physician, right? That's a treatment from someone that you see as a physician. However, you know what I'm saying? If it's outside of that and it becomes something that you do for pleasure, well, that's where it crosses over in the sin. That's what it crosses over in the intoxication. That's one of the things that Yahushua and the apostles told us that we can't do. So now if the evil spirits come to you from intoxication, the, the answer to that one, the first piece step of that one is stop. You got to stop doing whatever you're doing. Then you got to get to the root cause of what led me to start doing this in the first place. And then you got to say, OK, let me work through and face my issues. Let me face the things that, that I'm afraid of, the things that I'm running from. And sometimes it's a lot. Sometimes you build up so much, so much emotional debt that it's too much and it comes crashing down on you. So you need something. That's why you start taking drugs in the first place. But the longer you wait to start dealing with that stuff, the bigger it gets. And the harder it's going to be to take it. Right? To understand the, the importance of how this stuff works out and how, how it plays. I don't know. These folks, all kinds of, no, there's, no, there's some new stuff in there. And Sister Pamela said, actually, I don't know. That might be old, Sister Pamela. Actually, I don't know if they do. I don't even know if they mess with that no more. I think they, I think these guys, you right, though. They own all types of new stuff. So it's uh, Fenty. Truth Seeker said, what about prayer and fasting? Yeah, prayer and fasting. That's, that's one way. It, so what is fasting, right? Fasting, the book calls that afflicting yourself, right? It's afflicting yourself. So in afflicting yourself, what you're doing if I afflict someone, if I afflict my kids, what am I doing? Punishing. I'm punishing them. Yeah. And why am I punishing them? Probably because they did something wrong. They probably did something wrong, yeah, right? Them, yeah, keep them doing something so wrong. So I punish them to show them that you need to do right. Right? This is what it feels like when you do wrong. You need to do right. What are some of the ways we can punish? So some of the ways we can flick. We can definitely whoop some butt, right? So let's get that out. What's another way we can afflict? You can take away the pleasures. So I'll say, okay, you can't play your game. You can't have your phone. You can't talk on the phone. You can't do this. You can't go nowhere. You can't. And we take away everything. And what the kid has to do is learn to live without. Right? And then by living without, they feel what it feels like to live without. And they say, okay. Now I learned how to tell myself no because I don't want to deal with what it feels like when my mom tells me no or when my dad tells me no, right? So when, it, when I got an option to say I can do whatever I want to do right here or I can do what my mama told me to do, I'm going to choose to tell myself no. Don't do whatever you want to do. I'm going to choose to do whatever I want. I'm going to do what my mama tell me to do. And then when I do that, I've now told myself no as opposed to my mom or my dad taking everything from me, right? That's where wisdom comes in. So fasting teaches us that same type of wisdom, right? We learn to be okay without. So now when we go out into the world and we have to make tough decisions and we feel things, we like, man, why everybody get to do this? Or why everybody get to do that? Or why I can't have it like they got it? Or why I can't do that? And all this lust and covetousness and all these different pressures of the world start coming on us. When we've already trained ourselves to be without, I can go days without eating. I can go days without social media. I can go days without talking to nobody. I can go days or whatever, not because it feels good to me to do these things, not because I'm an introvert. You know what I'm saying? So I can go days with all that stuff just because. But if I'm doing it because it afflicts me, because it's a challenge for me, this is outside of my norm. I'm not eating. I'm not. Now I'm training myself to be without, training myself of what it feels like to be without, and then I'm learning to trust God through it. So it's like, man, I didn't know I could go a whole day, whole two days without eating or drinking anything. I thought I would die doing that. And then you do it and you like, you know what? It was rough maybe the first eight hours, but after that, I barely even thought about it. I barely even do it. And now you start building your faith in God. So then during that same time, you praying. You get more of a connection because now you don't have all these influences distracting your mind. You read in the Bible, you start to understand things a little differently. That is the purpose of fasting. Absolutely, fasting and prayer can help with all these things. Fasting and prayer can help with all things, right? It ain't too much of anything that fasting and prayer can't help with, right? 
So absolutely, that's a, that's one of the steps. No, nah, that's not Bro Daniel. No, nah, that's not Bro Daniel. That's uh, Sister Shanice, baby. There you go. Keep going. Let's see what we got. I didn't even know they can hear. They probably can only hear when I'm talking. And they began to pray, and they began to pray him to depart out of the out of their coast. And when he was coming to the shit, wait, hold on. look, when he killed all them pigs, they like, man, look, man, go on somewhere, right? Can you just please go? All right, keep going. Watch this. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to see Yahushua and to see him that was possessed with the devil. And he had the legion sitting and clothed. And, it, and he that had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that yeah, so look, the man, the man that everybody knew was crazy. Now he's sitting there, and the book said he in his right mind. And they looked at that. They look like, bro, this guy is different. This Yahushua that made all them fit pigs take on them evil spirits, and they ran off. The pig killed themselves. I'm looking. It's it's days later, and this man is still in his right mind. I ain't never seen. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never seen old Jobo. You know what I'm saying? That's old Jobo. I ain't never seen old Jobo sit still. Just talking regular. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Sitting in clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart uh, out of their coasts. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Albeit Yahushua suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee and hath, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Yahushua had done for him. And all men did marvel. And when Yahushua was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was near unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Darius by name. And when he saw, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray mm -hmm. thee, come and lay hands on her that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Yahushua went with him, and much people followed him and had thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue. So look, so look, Yahushua is going after this man who said his daughter is dead. He said he said it was dead, right? My little daughter lieth at the point of death, like she's almost dead. Yeah. Right? She almost died. All right. So Yahushua is following this, right? But now all the people are excited because he's doing all these miracles, more and more miracles. There's already a multitude of people following him to see the miracles and to get the teaching, right? He's speaking to them in parables. He's doing miracles. He's doing these things. Left and right, things are happening, things are happening. So the crowd is growing and growing. So now somebody comes to him and they say, hey, my daughter, she's about to die. I need help, right? So at that point, he's like, okay, I'll help. He starts walking. All the people are surrounding him and all of them, it's a throng in them. So it's just, just picture a big old. What happens when a celebrity has a concert? You always so you always got like a stage and you got everybody in in the crowd, right? Bunch of people usually, right? If Chris Brown steps down, right, and then get in the crowd, what's gonna happen? Everybody going and then when they come, are they gonna like get close they can without touching them? They gonna be touching them, right? They gonna sit there bumping up against them, like, oh man, I'm trying to get you know, them. No, I'm just and it because the people behind them is bumping them, right? So it's like I might not wanna, I wanna give them a space, but when I'm getting this close, it's 150 people behind me trying to get in the same spot that I'm getting. So they bumping me, and I bump into him, and we all bumping. I bump them back, and they bump into the front. So everybody going like this and bumping just as we walk. That's what's happening to y'all sure. So y'all sure is walking, and you got all this crowd of people that's like, yo, heal me. 
Hey, can you tell me what's going on in my life? Can you teach me about what you meant when that pair? But everybody asking all these different questions, got all these different requests because they know this man has power. So now they bumping them, bumping them, bumping them, bumping them. It's just a bunch of people all around them. And he's trying to work his way through the crowd and just trying to get to this, this young daughter that's about to die. Now watch what happens next. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Yahshua came in and, and came in the press behind and touched his garment. For right. Said, so look, it's the press. When they say the press, it's talking about the crowd of people. So she came from behind the crowd. She trying to fight through the crowd, too. But the only thing she could do is touch his garment. Touch what part of it? Do it say the part of his garment? It said, for she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Keep going. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she fell in her body and she was healed. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Mm -hmm. Yahshua immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples right? came to him. So look, it's a bunch of people pressing, bouncing them around. He's trying to fight through the crowd. This lady, in her mind, she's looking like, listen. I got this issue. I keep bleeding and ble bleeding and bleeding. I feel weak. I don't know what's going on with me. Nobody can help me. Right. But she said, man, listen, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, right? The, 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 the tassels of his garment is the part. It must not be in Mark. Uh, it might be That's, somewhere else. But the, the tassels of his garment, if I can just touch it, then I will be healed. She believed that. It is not hard to believe necessarily because you didn't see this man do a crazy thing. So she just looking like, man, just let me touch him. I believe I'll be healed. She ends up. Touch Nobody told her that. Right. Nobody said if you touch his clothes, you'll be healed. That's just what she she was so desperate that this is what it takes. I might be healed if I do this. So she reached out. She touched his garment. Right. She didn't even touch him. She touched his garment. And by that, she was healed. She felt her body being healed. And after that, he knew somebody had touched. And he said, who touched my garment? He asked his disciple. Watch, watch what his disciple said after that. Who touched my clothes? And his disciple said unto him, you see it's the multitude thronging thee and sayest thou who touched me? Right? You see all these people bumping into you, constantly rubbing into you, bumping into you, fight through. And they're looking at him like, and you trying to ask who touched you? Everybody darn touching you. Right? But y'all sure know what happened. He know he know what's going on, right? Because he's special. He's different, right? He might be a little artistic. You know what I'm saying? Seriously. I believe, I personally believe, if y'all sure walk around today, the way he talk, the way he act, you ask the man for the sandwich and what he going to say? My father feeds me. I live off the word of the most high God. I, to me, that's artistic, right? You kind of look at it to me it's like, okay, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Don't mess with don't mess with the Hebrew boy over there. You know what I'm saying? That boy, that boy a little crazy. You know what I'm saying? But that's how it looks. Right? Sometimes we look at this stuff and what's okay, kids, kids that have autism, one of the things that they say about them is they are hyper focused. Right? You give them something, and all they do is focus on that one thing. Right? Hyper focused. You don't think Yahushua is hyper-focused? Right? Hyper-focused. You can't tell him nothing. You can't get him off of anything. He's only focused on what he's focused on. You remember when he was sitting and he was learning the word and asking questions and answering questions from the doctors of the law down in the temple? Right? He was doing that. He got left. They were three days away from him. And they looking like, wait a minute, where Yahushua at? He's still at the temple learning because he's hyper focused. He forgot all about his parents leaving. He forgot all of all about the fact that he is supposed to go home. He just hyper focused on this one thing. I believe if you put Yahushua in front of one of these school counselors today, they're going to say. He has manic autism. Chronic manic autism. Right. And they're going to hit him off. And then they probably going to tell you to give him some medicine.
What do you think? What do you think, Mary, when she when she lost her son, you don't think she wanted to get if, if Mary had a pill to give her son when he got left, they walked three days. It ain't like they got a you know what I'm saying? They ain't they ain't got no darn uh what's that uh what's that truck called? What's the darn what's the darn SUV? They ain't got no darn excursion. They ain't got no Ford Explorer. Right? They had the footed three days out. They realized it's a group of people, everybody going back to Capernaum. Going back to Galilee, there's a group of people there. They look around and they looking like, y'all sure is y'all sure over there? Joseph, go check over there and see if y'all sure with that family over there. You know he be playing with them all the time. Now nah, he ain't over there. We ain't seen him. When's the last time you saw y'all sure? Uh, uh, he was over there by the temple. You saw y'all sure since he is at the temple? No, he is at the temple. Everybody say, no. Last time I saw him, he is at the temple. I thought he was with y'all. Like, oh man. So they run back. They looking around town, and then they finally go to the temple. Y'all sure look at him like he 12 years old. Didn't y'all know I was gonna be about my father's business? What? You know what I'm saying? What? Joseph probably forgot he ain't a daddy. He like, boy, that ain't my. That's a bad boy there. Then Joseph just gotta shut his darn mouth. You know you the stepdad, and you can't, you ain't gonna whoop. Yes, you, know, you ain't gonna whoop the stepdad. You ain't gonna whoop. So you just gotta be like, you better deal with your son. You know what I'm saying? You got then he gotta tell Mary, go deal with his son. Mary looking like, you know what? You are embarrassing me. Let's go. If they had a pill to give y'all sure that day, she probably would have gave him the pill. Right? Then it balanced, it might have been, but he just had hyper focus. Right? So that's what we're dealing with. He's so focused on the most high God. That he can feel this woman touch his 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 clothes in the midst of people bumping into him and rubbing them and and asking them questions and thronging them and pressing against them and all that. In the midst of all that, he can feel this woman touch his clothes just because of his focus. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing, but the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And mm -hmm. he said unto her daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house a certain which said, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? Right, so now she was almost dead. Then they came back with like, nah, she died. Right? Y'all, she got held up. It was a lot of stuff going on. He got held up. So it's like, man, she died. You know what I'm saying? I tried to get you there to her before, but you know, she died now. You know what I'm saying? Watch how this work out. And as soon as Yahushua heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. Right? So he said, don't nobody follow me. Right? Except... Peter, James, and who? John. And John. Peter, James, and John. It is important to understand those names. There's a reason why he chose those three. Those same three are going to become special later on. Right? Keep going. And he, and he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and to the tumult. And then, and them that weep and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he said unto them, why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but she sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he so they laughing at him because they look, they ain't never seen nobody talk like this. They're like, no, nah, she's not dead. They know, look, they didn't check their darn pulse. You know what I'm saying? Everything, like they know, they preparing everything. They know she died, right? So the whole town knows she died. They over there mourning her death. But y'all sure walk up and be like, man, what's wrong? Y'all right? Like, nah, man, you know. And the homie, you know, the homie daughter just died, man. Rough out here in these streets, man. It's just, you know, they gone too soon. They mourning. And he's like, oh, no, she's not dead. She's asleep. So that took him to a lab. Like, this guy, you, don't even, you know what I'm saying? You just don't know. I'm, I know y'all think I'll be playing. They probably look at him like, this guy a little slow. You know what I'm saying? Like, you do some special stuff, you cool. But you don't really think, you're not, your thinking ain't all the way there. Only because he's hyper-focused. Some of our kids, some of our people be special. All we got to do is introduce the right things to them, 
right? Find their minds to be triggered on the right things. But we don't. Sometimes we don't. Right? Y'all sure that's how they're trying to look at him. They're trying to get him off. They looking like, man, man, you, know, you talking about special boy. She dead, bro. That, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't, you can't walk in there talking like that, talking about she's sleep, man. They just lost a kid. What's wrong with this dude? All right, and they laughing at him. All right, keep going, watch this. And they laughed him to scorn, but when he had put them out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Halitha Kumai, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. All right. He said, don't tell nobody about this. Right. She dead. They know she dead. They laughing at him like, man, we already know she dead, bro. What you talking about some sleep? He walk in there. He like, all right, everybody get back then. Since she's so dead, all y'all stand over there. Right. I want you, mom, you, mom, and you, dad. OK, come with me. Walk right in there because he already knew. You know what I'm saying? Let me bring mom and dad in here so they can see this. Right. Then he grabbed her by the hand. He's like, go on, get up. He got right on up. He like, all right, somebody get her something to eat. She probably hungry. You know how cold this guy is? <laughs> like, you, everybody's in there. They mourning. They about, they planning like, okay, well, we probably going to have to bury her over here. You know what I'm saying? Man, we got we going to have to do something for the parents. You know what I'm saying? You know, they going through it over there. But we going to have to bury her over there. Don't you got a plot of land? They, they planning all this. He walk up. No, nah, she ain't dead. They laughing at him. The parents irritated. You imagine the parent is why y'all laughing while we going through this stuff. He get right by me like, hey, get them, get all these boys out of here. She ain't, she ain't dead. She sleep. Well, okay, y'all get out of here. Everybody get out of here. You mom, you dad. Okay, let's go. Grab her right by the hand immediately. She get her butt right on up. I might get her some eat. She hungry. <laughs> you know how cold that gotta be. She, nah, just get her some. She hungry. Like what? I'll make her a sandwich right now. You know what I'm saying? And then they give it to her. Right? This is the type of guy that you messing with. And then he told everybody, he said, don't tell anybody. Right? Don't say anything to anybody. Right? Keep it, keep it close to the heart. Watch this. Chapter six. It's what? It's chapter six? Mm hmm all right, keep going. And he went out from there, went out from thence, and came into the, his own country, and his disciples followed him. Uh, he, jump on down to verse 14. And King Herod heard of him, for his name was spread abroad. And he said, that John the Baptist was risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Others said, this is Elijah. And others said, this is a prophet or is one of the prophets. So but now everybody is seeing the things that he's doing. He just raised a kid from the dead. So they looking like John the Baptist is back from the dead because John the Baptist died. Right. And we're going to we're going to we're going to read about that in a second. Right. But John the Baptist died. And so other people is looking like um, he's Eli uh, Elijah. You remember Elijah, he resurrected in the prophets in the book of Kings, he resurrected a, a, a person, a boy, I think. Right? So he calls a boy to come back to life. So they looking like, well, he's Elijah. So they kind of trying to identify like this guy is special. Others are just like he's some other prophet. Whatever it is, this guy is different and he's sent from the most high God, is what a lot of them are arguing about. They just don't know who he represents. They're not necessarily saying he's the Messiah. They're just saying that he's a, he's a prophet, he's the other. But you do got people calling him the Messiah also. So watch watch how they go back and forth and watch what happens. But when Herod heard thereof, he said, it is John whom, I'm, whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his, bro his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For right, John so this is, this is how... This is how uh, John the Baptist ended up dying, right? So John the Baptist ended up dying because Herod himself, he took him, 
right? And he ended up killing. But watch how this happened. Watch this. For John had said unto Herod, it is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Therefore, Herodias had a quarrel against him and would have killed him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man and holy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. And when a convenient day was come that Herod on his birthday made a supper unto his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee, and when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod and them that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatever you will, and I will give it thee. And he swore unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom. And when and she went forth and said unto her mother, What shall I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in straightway, straightway with haste unto the king, and asked, saying, I will that you give me you give me by you give me by and by in the charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceedingly sorry, yet for his oath's sake and for their sakes, which sat with him, he would not reject her. And he immediately, the king sent an executioner and commanded that his head be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison and sought his head in the charge and brought his head in the charger and gave it to the damsel. And the damsel gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard it of it, they came and took up his corpse and laid it in the tomb. So. Oh. John the Baptist ended up dying because he was prophesying against the king, Herod. And he told the king, he said, listen, you know, you shouldn't be with your brother's wife. That's against our law. You in the land of Israel. Right. So the king is not from Israel. The king is a Gentile. Right. But John the Baptist is saying you're in the land of Israel. You got to keep our law, too. You ain't above our law. So he called them out saying. You know you're not supposed to have his wife. Right? You know that's against our law. You can't sleep with your brother's wife. That's against our law. Right? And then he's, he's condemning them for it. He's telling them, like, no, don't do this. No, you can't do this. Now, Herod got respect for John the Baptist because he know he right. So he's looking like, man, leave me alone. Right? Leave me alone. Don't do that. Leave me alone, Herod. Leave me alone, Herod. So... He try to, he try to, he try to like, he try to like just, just, yeah, just put him to the side, put him in prison, put him out of his face. But the wife don't like it. She, she feel like, he, she feel like John the Baptist is messing up his whole, her whole game. Right? So the wife don't like it. So the wife waits on this day, right? That, that Herod is feeling good. And he's looking like, you know what, baby, whatever you want from me, just say it. I got it. It was his wife's daughter. His wife's daughter. Right? Whatever you want from me. Right? I I got you. I I I I give it to you. Right? So then the daughter said, Okay, what should I ask him for? And she asked her mom. Her mom hate John the Baptist because she messing up her whole 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 shebang. So then she say, John the Baptist's head. If he's gonna give you anything. Tell him to kill John the Baptist. You can imagine the moms probably always ask for this. So since Herod promised the daughter saying, I will do anything for you, just ask. If she asked for it, he followed through. And so John the Baptist got his head cut off. They brought the head to the daughter. The daughter brought it to the moms and the moms probably looked at him and was like, you darn right. Right. So that's how John the Baptist died. After John the Baptist died. Uh, you know what I'm saying? All the disciples, you know what I'm saying? They kind of mourn, but now they got to, you know what I'm saying? Take up his body and they went and they went and buried it. So let's look at what happened after that. What verse is that? We're on verse 30. Verse 30. Actually, uh, go to, um, go to Matthew 11, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 11, verse one. This is Matthew chapter 11, verse 1. It came to pass when Yahshua had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed from there. He departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now, when John had heard in the prison the works of the Messiah, he sent two disciples and said unto him, Are you he that should come, or do we look for another? So this is before John died, right? John sent to Yahushua 
Because you got to imagine, like, John was a relative to Yahushua, right? But probably didn't hang out much. Yahushua comes and gets baptized by John. He sees a vision, like this is supposed to be the one. But still don't hang out much, right? So he hears things about Yahushua. But John is probably expecting the same thing that everybody expecting from the Messiah. He probably expecting that you're going to take over and we're going to become king. So now who is uh, who is John the Baptist fighting with right now? He's fighting with this false king, this king that's a Gentile over all of Israel. So John is probably expecting for somebody to come and topple Herod. I like to imagine John start getting a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Like his chest start filling up a little bit when he thought Yahushua was the Messiah. He looking like, oh, the dove rested on him? Y'all, that must be, that's him. He the Messiah. He going to be the king of Israel. So he probably start talking crazy to Herod after that. Stop messing with your brother sister. You know what I'm saying? Start going crazy on him because he started feeling like, oh, it's all right. We ain't got a whole lot of time left. Yahushua about to take this whole thing over. Right? Get her, get her. Yahushua about to take this whole thing over in a little bit. Right? It ain't going to be a whole lot of time left. So he probably talking to him crazy at that point. But then he talking to him crazy and he see things are starting to spice up. He see the wife is starting to hate him a lot more. She got some power. She making it tough. They got him in and out of prison. Right. So then I like to imagine that he sent a message like, man, listen. Is it you? I just want to I want you all to put the context around like all these years are passed. Well, it's really not a whole lot of years, but it's probably it's probably at least a year that's passed. Right. And he sent a message to Yahushua like, is you the one or are we waiting for somebody else? Because it's taking longer than John the Baptist thought. Remember, y'all ain't give him no timeline. Y'all ain't tell John the Baptist like, yo, it's only going to take a couple months or anything. And he didn't tell him it's going to take 2,000 years, 4,000 years. He just told him, whoever that dove rests on, that's my boy. Right? So watch this. Watch what John the Baptist uh, sent to Yahushua and said. And he said unto him, Are you he that should come, or do we look for another? And Yahushua answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Yahshua began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaking with the wind? Mm -hmm. But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, mm -hmm. they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, and I say unto you, more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Right. So now Yahushua is talking about John the Baptist and he's telling he's trying to let people know that John the Baptist is not just a regular prophet. Right. So he's asking the people when y'all went to go see John the Baptist, what did y'all think y'all was seeing? Right. Why did y'all go out there? Y'all just go out there because he he had on nice clothes in the desert. They looking like, why did you what what was your reason for going out there to see John the Baptist? Back up, boy. Oh, go back over there. Right? What was your reason to, to for seeing John the Baptist? And he asked him, why? Because y'all thought y'all were seeing a prophet? Okay, good. But he was more than a prophet. Right? Watch what he say next. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. So he told you, out of everybody that came from a woman's womb, there is not one that is greater than John the Baptist. He telling you John the Baptist is the best out of all y'all. Keep going, watch this. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Right? But if you are just the least in the kingdom of heaven, that means you're greater than John the Baptist. So now hold what we got here and go back to Matthew chapter 5. This is Matthew chapter 5. Give me verse uh, 17. It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Watch what the book says. 
Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not mm -hmm. come to destroy, but to fulfill. Mm -hmm. so verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So he said, listen, the whole law stands. Nothing is going to pass until all of it is fulfilled. Matter of fact, heaven and earth is going to be in play. As long as you see heaven and earth, you know that everything in the law still stands is what he just told you. So if you look up and you see the sky, right? And you look down and you see or you see the ground, you know for a fact that the law is still stands. Somebody tell you the law done away with. All you got to do is look up and then look down. And if you see both of them, you be like, man, shut up. You know what I'm saying? He just told you. Read it again. Verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be Fulfilled. So the only way anything from the law is going to pass is if heaven and earth pass. If heaven and earth have not passed, the law is still in effect. That is a fact. You can't get around it. I don't care what nobody try to teach you. That is a fact, right? But watch the next verse. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Right. So if you break one of the least of the commandments, commandments still in effect, it's still law. But if you break one of the least of them, you'll be what? Least and teach men so he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. You can break them and teach people to break the least of the commandments. And guess what? You'll be least in the kingdom. And least in the kingdom is greater than who? John the Baptist. John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is greater than who? Everybody born of a woman. Everybody. Right? So it's important to understand what Yahushua is trying to teach us here. He's trying to teach you with once you get into the kingdom, he is going to make you greater than the greatest human being ever. Right? You will be greater than the greatest human being ever once you get into the kingdom. And to get into the kingdom, it is possible to break the law. Those are two things. And then the last thing is, the law is not done away with, it's still in effect. That concept is very confusing to a lot of people because we've been taught to think either the law is done away with or you got to keep the whole law to get into the kingdom. That's a very difficult concept for a lot of people, right? But what Yahushua is teaching us is all three of those things is fact. One, you can break the least of the king, uh, commandments and you can be least in the kingdom. By doing that, you are greater than the greatest man that ever lived, right? And on top of that, what was my third one? I forgot. Oh, the law is still, the, the law is still in effect. The law still stands. It's still in effect. Right. We will continue to talk about this subject and we will continue to unpack it and make sure we understand it. Right. But just understand the law does never promise life. The law, you can read all the law. You can read it backwards and front. Every way you want to read it, you never going to see the law tell you, hey, go ahead, keep the law and you will have eternal life. In fact, it promises life one time. It says. The man who does these things shall live by them, right? That is a promise of life right there, right? But it also tells you whoever doesn't continue in all these things to do them is cursed. So if anybody has sinned, you have broken the law and you are cursed according to the law, you have to die, right? What Yahushua offers us is for us to live forever if we repent from all sins and obey Yahushua, obey the son. Right. If you obey the son and you repent from all sin, then you can enter into the kingdom. If you keep the law and you repent from all sin and obey Yahushua, then you will be great in the kingdom. If you break the law. But still keep everything that Yahushua commands you, which is different from the law, right? You keep everything that Yahushua commands you, then you will be least in the kingdom. He's giving you a hierarchy of getting into the kingdom. So if a person asks, 
Well, why do we keep the law then? Because our law teaches us how to perfectly love. How to perfectly care for our people and our neighbor. When the books say neighbor, it's not talking about just necessarily just somebody who lived close to you. It's talking about a companion, a friend. Somebody that you join to. Right. It teaches you how to take care of your community. How else will you learn how to love perfectly? And if you don't know how to love perfectly, there's no way to be great in the kingdom of heaven. If you got an imperfect love, you can't be great in the kingdom of heaven. You got an imperfect sense of sacrifice. You can't be great in the kingdom of heaven. So by keeping the law, then you learn to love perfectly. And by learning to love perfectly, you become great in the kingdom. But at the bare minimum, if you want to make it into the kingdom at all, you have to repent from all sin. Right? Go to, uh, uh, let's go back. Where are we at? Matthew? Where we leave off? Uh, 11, 11. It's Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Watch the book say. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And mm -hmm. from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. And the violence right, so from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven does what? Suffers violence. Suffereth violence. Watch this. And the violent take it by force. And the violent will take it by force. Keep going. For all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, this is Elijah, which was for to come. He that has ears is a hear, let him hear. Right? Yeah. So what he's telling them, it, it's very cryptic, right? He's not giving it to them flat out. But basically what he's telling them is at the beginning of Yao, uh, at the beginning of John the Baptist, the kingdom is here. He's talking about himself. He's talking, he's saying, he's saying, I'm the kingdom. And I'm going to be taken by violence. Right? When these people come get me, they going to kill me, is what he's trying to say. Right? But if y'all can understand what, he, what he's saying to y'all, if y'all can understand what I'm saying is, John the Baptist is really Elijah. So anybody who knows the prophecy, they know that Elijah comes and he straightens out the path for the Messiah. That's what the prophecy says. The day of, the, the day of Yahuwah, is going to come with Elijah coming first and turning the hearts of the children back to the fathers and the fathers back to the children. So when people hear that, they know, oh, this is the precursor for the day of Yahuwah. This is it. Like, it's coming. Right? And that's what he's trying to explain to them. Like, hey, it's me. Right? Keep going. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and mm -hmm. saying, we have piped for you. We have piped unto you and you have not danced. We have mourned unto you and you have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a devil. The son of man comes eating and drinking and they say, behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Right, so what he's explaining there is he looking like the this and this is how the, this is important because y'all should know how the most high God work, right? This is how he worked. Most high God will often present to you something two ways. And we don't even notice it because we so just focus on whatever we focus on other than God. But he presents stuff to you two ways, right? So he's saying, Look, John came to you and he didn't eat or drink. Right? Remember, the people came to him and was like, Why don't y'all fast like John? Right? But the people didn't even obey John. So he's looking like John came to you and he didn't eat or drink. And y'all reject him. Right. The son of man come. And when the son of man come, he both eat and drink. I'm partying out here. Yeah. Y'all coming to me like, man, why y'all not fasting? Why your disciples don't fast? And he looking like y'all reject me, too. Right. So he said wisdom will be justified by her children. In other words, it's going to be the descendants of these people. That look back at Yahushua and be like, dang, Yahushua was the one. Right after he died, that's what people said. He's the one. Right? And their children going to end up being disciples and all types of stuff. 
And he says, that is what's going to condemn you. That's what's going to justify him. Right? Wisdom is justified by her children. Keep going. Then began he to upbraid the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Woe well unto thee, Chorazon. Woe well unto thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they'd have, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And you right? So what does that mean? I always like pointing this out to people because it, it, we have a misconception of God and how he worked, right? We had this, we had this assumption that God will do anything to save everybody. But it's like, no, right? And you should know that logically you should know that's not true because if we believe we have an all-powerful God and we believe that he would do anything to save everybody, then everybody would be saved, right? So that's not logical. But let's look at exactly what Yahushua was saying. He's saying, whoa, in other words, destruction onto these places that I did all these miracles, yet y'all still rejected me. Then he said, because had Tyre and Sidon had these miracles, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes, right? So we read about Tyre. Y'all remember Tyre? Tyre was the one that was going to war with David, right? Tyre is the one that goes to war with, with Solomon, goes to war with almost all the kings, especially the kings of Israel after we split, right? And we have prophets that went up to Tyre. You have, you have entire books, of, I mean, uh, chapters of prophecy from Amos, and from uh, Isaiah, I think, right? All talking about Tyre and the destruction that's going to come to Tyre. All talking about Sidon and the destruction that's going to come to Sidon, right? So all these prophets are going to these places and they telling them, look, man, it's about to get bad. But none of them did the miracles that Yahushua did, right? And because they didn't do the miracles that Yahushua did, they didn't repent in those places. So that means God knew. That if we did these miracles, right, if I sent the prophet that did miracles and did it just like Yahushua did in all these places, these people would have repented, but chose not to do it. And that's what we have to get in our head. It's things that the most high God, you know, sometimes we be praying, be like, God, just show me us. Show me if you show me your, your power, Lord, help me believe. Right. That's just all I need. And I promise you that I'll give you. He can do it. The Most High God can 1,000% do it. And you should pray for it, right? However, if it don't happen, your mindset got to be, okay, well, I'm still going to try to obey you. I'm still going to try to believe. I'm still going to try to figure it out. I'm still going to do this. Because if you rely on him to tap dance for you, you might not get in there. Because he, he might not be aligned with what you asked him for. The people was tired and the people were side and he wasn't alive in that spot. They bust got tore up. They got judged. And he knew that all I had to do was go there, raise a couple people from dead, heal some sick, and they all would have repented like, no, nah, this is the one true living God. But he didn't. And it's a lot of stuff that he's choosing not to do for us because we should be able to believe and we should be able to obey him even though he's not showing us miracles even though we got all these false prophets around, even though it's as confusion as it is, even though all these people are lying, even though the news is never telling us the truth, even though these pastors never tell us the truth, all that stuff, even still, we supposed to be like, that's all right, I'm still going to obey. Still going to get it together. We have to remove all excuses because I can assure you that that's what y'all is just doing. That's what y'all is doing right now. When he say, look, I gave you John the Baptist, you didn't obey. And I come, I'm I'm eating and drinking. You know what I'm saying? And y'all don't obey me. Y'all call me a wine bibber and a uh and a glut. All right. When the children come, it's gonna be justified. Keep going, watch this. And you Capernaum and thou Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. At that time, Yahshua answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, look at this. I ain't read this in a long time. Look at this. Watch what he say. Yahushua said at that time, what? 
I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them unto babes. So mm -hmm. now, did Yahushua just thank God for hiding information, hiding understanding from wise people? Is that what we just read? He thanked God. He said, oh, thank you, y'all, because you hid it from them. But gave it to who? The babes. Y'all have to start changing how y'all think of God and how y'all think of Yahushua. He's thankful to God that he hid this information from the people that think they wise, that think they understand, that think they got it. It wasn't just like, oh, well, they, they hid it because they, no, he said, I thank you. I appreciate you hiding it from them and giving it to the babes. There's a reason why he says that. And that has to factor in to what you think about this all loving God. Right. A lot of the stuff that they fed us, it makes us weak and it makes us docile. So we don't take self responsibility. All these people want is unconditional love because they ain't no it ain't no accountability with unconditional love. And then when they see unconditional love in action, then they're going to tell you that's toxic. Because, I mean, what if, a, what if a woman love a man unconditionally, even though he's slapping her in the head? I know, but I still love him, though. What are we going to say about it? Are we going to look at that and be like, see, that is unconditional love at work. Or are we going to say that's abuse? So if the most high God, you, that's what y'all want. Y'all want the most high God to be sitting here while y'all smacking them in the head. I don't care nothing about what you, you just, y'all smack God in there and you just want to be like, but I still love you. It ain't cool for you. If a woman go upside her man head, bow, 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 bow. All right, baby, but I still love you. What do we look at him? He more of a man? No, we look at him like, boy, you don't need to deal with that stuff. That woman is crazy. Why are you dealing with that stuff? Oh, well, I just love her unconditionally. That's not love. She don't love you. I know, but I love her unconditionally. You're in a toxic relationship. That's what they're going to say. Right? That is what unconditional love is. It's toxicity. Ain't nobody going to tell you that. But every time you see a real example of unconditional love, that's what they're telling you. It's not pretty because there's a lack of accountability in those situations. The only thing that's real is when you have conditions. And that's why everything with y'all has conditions. I will love you if you obey me. I will give you this if you obey my law. I will resurrect you if you turn away from all sin. There is always conditions because there will always be accountability. There will always be something that gets taken away. Meanwhile, we raise our kids to sit here and walk around and mope around and be sad. Be, oh, my mom won't give me this and my dad won't give me this and I can't have this and they won't let me go there because there is conditions. That is love. I was talking, I was talking to a friend of mine, or an ex-co-worker of mine, and she was telling me about her oldest daughter. She was like, you ain't never let me do this, this, that, and other, da, da, da. You used to be so hard on me. And this, that, and the other. You love your younger kids. She grown. She like, you love your younger kids more than me. And when she responded to it, she said, I was like, what you tell her? How you responded to that? She was like, she was like, no, nah, it's quite the opposite. I probably loved you the most. It's them I don't really like like that. That's why I let them get away with doing all this other stuff. I'm too old. I ain't got time to be deal with it. She is like, you're the one that I adored and I love. That's why I was so hard on you. That's why I wouldn't let you go here. That's why I wouldn't let you get into this. That's why I tried to protect you and I hovered over you and tried to make sure you didn't get into nothing because I cherish you. She is like, it's them that I don't mess with like that. That's why I let them just do whatever. I ain't, I ain't got time for it. But when you are in that and you under those conditions, it feels like, hey, why you, why you, why you doing that? And that's how we feel about God. If we honest with ourselves, why would God let this happen to me? Why would God put me in this situation? Why wouldn't he prevent me from doing this? Why couldn't he just take the will and cause me not to do this and not to want that? Why can't he just take away my desire to do the things that I don't want to do? 
And that's how we looking at it. Like, God, you could prevent all this. You want to. Sure. But then where's your accountability? Right. Everything that we deal with when it comes, everything we deal with in life has to deal with conditions. If it's real, if you have something that don't got conditions, it's not real. And that goes for anything. If somebody call you and be like, hey, there's free money. Just come on down. If it don't got conditions on it, if it don't got something that you got to get in and put into it, chances are it is a scam. It is fake. And that applies to anything worldly, spiritually, anything. You got to have some skin in the game or it ain't going to work. And that's the only thing that the most high God trying to do for us. Right. Keep going. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto my father and no man knoweth the son but the father. Neither knoweth any man the father save the son and he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm -hmm. End of the chapter. That's the end of the chapter. Yeah. Right? So now Yahushua is offering us a spot. He's telling us, man, just come on to me. I'll make it light on you. Right? We think it's hard. We think it's heavy. It feels like a lot to us. But he's looking at the bigger picture. He's looking like, if you think this a lot, try burning in hell for the rest of, for, for the rest of eternity. <laughs> if you think this is heavy, no, oh, I can't. I just wish I. If y'all think that's a lot, let me tell you something. Try burning in hell for the rest of eternity. He's telling you, what I'm offering you is much lighter than what's coming if you don't listen to me. Right? Next week, we're going to get into, we're going to get into uh, a very, very long chapter. We're probably only going to be able to read that chapter. It's uh, John chapter 6. Um, so we're going to read John chapter 6 next week. We're going to talk a little bit about, um, we're going to see how Yahushua challenges, just directly challenges people, challenges their mindset, causes them to pick, to pick a side, to make a choice. Right. To decide, do I want to sit here and try to understand what he's saying? Because I really don't get it. Or do I want to reject him? Do I want to say, oh, no, nah, he's crazy. I mean, he do these miracles. But I don't know where that power coming from. because It don't feel like it's from God. That's the that's the that's a position everybody got to be put in. Is he from God or is he not? Is he a prophet of the most high God or is he some magician? Right. That's what we're going to look into. We're going to kind of see how the people respond to it. Any questions? Uh, Sister Danielle wanted to know if when the spirits went into the swan and the swan died, did the spirits die also? Oh, yeah, I did see that question. I forgot to get back to that one. I um, uh, appreciate you, Sister Pam. Thank you for bringing that one back up, bro. Uh, the, um, Danielle no, the spirit... I don't I don't have any information to say the spirits die. Yeah, I don't I don't got nothing. I don't got nothing like saying the spirits die. So my understanding would be that uh if the spirits if the spirits uh were in the swine, the, the pigs die and the spirits can continue on. Yeah, say hey Tasha girl. Oh hi. I was back here. Oh, yeah. And you'll say hi, Tasha. Hi. Whatever. I want to say hi to you anyway. Uh, so, uh, it's, yeah, tell TJ he needs to uh, tap in since his phone ain't working. You need to tap in like once a day, once every other day or something. You're that brass. <laughs> that boy, a brass. No, I'm fine. <laughs> No, no. Look, hey. I yeah, miss right? you, son. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. I miss you too, Dad. Hey. Tell him. Tell him in the camera. Right on the third. You understand? <laughs> that boy miss it. He in trouble. You understand? You trying to miss that flight? He plotting on missing it right now. You see his face. Yeah, all right. He's gonna have to answer the he gonna have to answer the Uncle Chip. He gonna owe Uncle Chip some money. <laughs> That's a gold game. Hmm? Any other questions?
What time of fellowship? Yeah, we're gonna do uh we're gonna do one o'clock. I can make one o'clock. We'll we'll figure out. I'll post in the band right now, but yeah, I want to do one o'clock. Uh I think some of y'all said y'all can make it. I gotta look and see whoever said they can make it. Um but yeah, one o'clock so let's say we're gonna do one o'clock Pacific time tomorrow, right now. And if that change, I'll let y'all know. It ain't gonna change. One o'clock Pacific time tomorrow. That's what it is. Did you just say specific time? <laughs> specific time. <laughs> All right. No other questions. Let's pray out. Right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another Sabbath weekend, another opportunity to hear and learn of the word of truth. We thank you for our family that's been here, Father, um, that's been continue with us, continuing with us and staying consistent. Father, we just pray that um, you give us all consistency um, and help us get through the times where there isn't a Sabbath study or there isn't fellowship call and all of the things that we go through um, in our minds and in our hearts, Father, when there's nobody around that can hold us accountable, Father, we pray that you will give us uh, the spirit to, to to make sure that we press through, Father, and uh, get through the week so that we can congregate with each other. And y'all should know we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. All right, bro. Send me the scripture if you can. Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please. Should be, should be in order of four. I need all four of them. Then. Yeah. I just had some root beer yesterday. Uh, it was the first time I had root beer in a while. I feel like.